Over the past two years, massive waves of layoffs hit the tech industry hard, including Netflix, Microsoft, Amazon, Meta, Alphabet, LinkedIn, the list goes on. Tim Cook even took a 40% pay cut. Luckily, most of these layoffs were for software related engineering positions, but I do know a good amount of mechanical engineers who were laid off as well. I've never been laid off myself, but I definitely feel for anyone who has been laid off. I can't imagine how hard and scary the entire experience is. This video is for any of you who have been recently laid off or are simply job hunting for the first time. I'll provide you with an effective strategy and all the tips you'll need to land your dream engineering job. To start off, we need to first figure out what's your ideal dream job. You need to first ask yourself, which industries are you most passionate about? Whether it's aerospace, automotive, or robotics, understanding your preferences will help guide your job search. For example, if you know that your dream job is to work in the aerospace industry and that you hate the tech industry, apply to places like Airbus, Boeing, General Electric, Safran, and SpaceX. Don't even waste your precious time applying for jobs at Apple, Meta, or Amazon. It's very easy to fall into the trap of mass applying to job positions without even reading the job descriptions and narrowing down your options. But just take a moment moment to jot down your interests and all the areas of mechanical engineering that excite you. This clarity will not only help you focus your efforts, but also stand out to potential employers who appreciate dedication and passion. Now that you have a good idea of what a dream job looks like for you, you can start to put together a job searching strategy, which includes goals and deadlines. There are a gazillion job search websites out there, and you shouldn't use most of them. Some notable ones are LinkedIn, ZipRecruiter, Monster, Indeed, and Glassdoor. I only recommend using one of them, which is LinkedIn. I've had the best luck and response rate and found all of my full-time positions here. You can easily filter jobs based on a position's title, such as mechanical design engineer, or a company if you have a specific one in mind. You can also search by skill. If you're looking for a product design position, you can search jobs that use SOLIDWORKS. Now that we've selected a reliable job searching platform, we can set several realistic goals for ourselves. Some goals that I set for myself when I'm job hunting are apply to five to eight jobs of interest per day, connect with five people on LinkedIn who work at companies I'm interested in, and ask for a referral. Now I try to target alumni from my university because they're more likely to help me compared to total strangers. But in either case, I really have nothing to lose. Another goal is attend at least one career fair per semester and attend a resume critique session and mock interviews at my university center for career development. Notice that all of these goals are within my control and are not impossible to achieve. It's important to keep track of all the goals you reached and all of the goals you fell short of and holding yourself accountable. Next, moving on to grades. This one pertains more to you if you're currently in university. Now, I don't want you guys to think that grades and GPA are the be all end all when it comes to finding an engineering job, but they are especially important for landing job interviews, particularly if you're a fresh college graduate. Just think about it. If you can't get job interviews, then you won't be able to land job offers. I've talked with several HR recruiters in the past and the average time they spend looking at a resume is six to 10 seconds. The things that they look for in an entry-level engineering position are grades, practical experience, and relevant skills. If they like what they see, they'll invite you in for a phone screen or a face-to-face -face interview, depending on the company. If you pass the phone screen, you'll move on to the subsequent rounds of interviews with the engineering team and management. Some companies also use resume screening software that filter out resumes that don't meet their criteria. One of which very well could be GPA. Now, instead of telling yourself that you need to get an A in every class that you take, focus on learning and understanding the material to the best of your ability. Many of the core mechanical engineering courses 
including statics and dynamics, mechanics of materials, material science, heat transfer, thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, manufacturing processes, and engineering design heavily involve calculus and physics. So we want to make sure to really buckle down in your calculus one, two, three, and differential equations classes, as well as physics, which includes Newtonian mechanics and electricity and magnetism. From my experience doing the homeworks, practice exams, problems from your textbook, and reviewing your mistakes definitely are conducive to success. Success. However, I felt that doing practice problems was insufficient for teaching me the more abstract and complicated concepts. Today's video is sponsored by Brilliant, which is the ultimate platform for hands-on learning in math, science, and engineering. What makes Brilliant unique is its unwavering commitment to delivering fresh content every month, ensuring a continuous flow of captivating lessons. Whether you're a beginner or expanding on existing knowledge, Brilliant customizes its content to your needs, providing the flexibility for self-paced learning on your phone, tablet, or computer. I've personally taken all the math and physics courses on Brilliant, and they were all game-changing. Their compact lessons and intuitive learning paths helped me to understand concepts more fully and deeply, and significantly improved my information retention compared to traditional lectures. Brilliant was a key player both in my educational journey and job hunt. One course that I found to be very helpful was the classical mechanics course. It covers everything from kinematics to forces to momentum using real world problems like calculating how much fuel a rocket needs to get to space. Try out everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days using my link brilliant.org slash engineering gone wild listed in the description below. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Now what employers value even more than grades are skills. This is because skills are what gets great products designed and built and what help the company make money. The company is investing in you and your skills and their hope is that you'll yield a high return on investment through the work that you do. Developing new skills and improving upon skills that you aren't so good at takes time but the rewards are totally worth it and will maximize your chances of landing your dream job. What I typically do is go on LinkedIn and search for exactly 30 jobs I'm interested in. I'll go through the job description and jot down all of the skills that the employer is looking for. For example, this senior cell mechanical engineer at Tesla requires candidates to be proficient at battery mechanical fair modes and mechanisms, rapid prototyping, CAD, GD&T, design of experiments, and FEA. So I would begin by listing these down in the left column and my strengths in the right column. I'm great at FEA, rapid prototyping, design of experiments, and GD&T. However, my CAD and knowledge of battery testing and error modes could use more work. I'll then make it a priority to spend at least 30 minutes to an hour each day to hone these skills. To improve my CAD skills, I'll practice modeling parts and surfaces in SOLIDWORKS. Then I'll list that skill on my resume and to prove to employers that I'm not just bluffing, I'll get certified in SOLIDWORKS and do a project or two showcasing my expertise. For battery testing, I'll read through a lot of notable research papers that are heavily cited and become an expert in this area. One thing I found to be quite helpful is trying to reproduce the numerical results in these papers using multi-physics and FEA software. As you can tell, developing new skills doesn't come overnight, so start as early as you can so you'll be prepared once you actually do begin interviewing. Now let's talk about the key to opening doors in the job market, your resume. Your resume is essentially the first impression you give employers, so you wanna make sure it's perfect. Highlight your education, relevant experience, and skills. Remember to always tailor your resume for each job application, emphasizing your skills and qualifications that align with the specific role you're applying for. I know it's easy to submit the same resume for multiple job applications, but HR can easily tell and will simply filter 
filter out resumes that contain irrelevant information. Spending an extra one or two minutes customizing your resume for each individual job application will pay huge dividends when it comes to receiving job interviews and offers. Keep each bullet point concise, use a clean font like Arial and consistent formatting, use active voice, make sure everything is spelled correctly, and keep your resume one page long. For your experience section, you want to emphasize the results of the work that you did instead of just saying you did X, Y, and Z. When writing your resume, always remember that employers value time and money. So every project and job experience that you mention should demonstrate how you reduce cost, increase efficiency, or improve various aspects of a product or process. I'll link my resume template in the description below for any of you who are interested. Once you've perfected your resume and started applying to jobs you're interested in, you should prepare for interviews right away. Don't wait until the emails for scheduling interviews start rolling in to prepare. HR will usually want to kick off the interview process as soon as possible. Research the company's products, history, competitors, and strategy, and search for keywords in the job description that hint what questions the interviewers will ask. One of the most challenging things about mechanical engineering technical interviews is you never know what the interviewer who could be an engineer engineering manager or panel of engineers will ask mechanical engineering is a very broad discipline and I'm not gonna lie there's a lot of knowledge to acquire to help you guys out I put together a list of 80 technical questions spanning all aspects of mechanical engineering that I think are great to know and hopefully will help you land your dream job so for any of you who are interested check out the link in the description below. You should also know your resume inside and out. If you made it past the phone screen with HR and onto the second round of interviews, it's very likely your resume is pretty good. I bombed my first couple of interviews because I focused way too much on the technical questions and completely forgot about my resume. You need to know every bullet point and every word and every sentence because engineering managers love to kick off an interview by going through your resume before getting into the actual technical questions. With the rise of AI, there are a plethora of tools that you can leverage to do mock interviews, including ChatGPT. But nothing beats a real face-to-face -face mock interview with a friend or someone from your school's career development office. Whenever you do mock interviews, always record the entire process with your phone so you can watch it afterwards to hear what you sound like and examine your body language. The way we think we sound and how we actually sound can be day and night difference. The great thing about recording yourself is that you can answer questions basically anywhere until you're happy with the way you sound. Last but not least is networking. Networking is an ongoing process and is all about building connections now so you can leverage them later on. Think of it as an investment. If you're in university, make as many friends as you can. Of course, I mean with people who have a positive influence on you, not some random guy on the street. Go talk with every professor in your class and get to know them and talk to recruiters at career fairs. Don't underestimate how much your connections can help you when you most need it, whether that's giving you a top-notch recommendation or job referral. I've learned that even if your connections can't help you out directly, they might have connections that can. This is exactly how I got my first internship. So I knew someone who knew the CTO of a company and they asked the CTO if they were interested in hiring mechanical engineering interns. The crazy thing is I didn't even have to apply and I interned there every winter and summer break starting my sophomore year. Obviously, like many things, some luck is involved here, but the moral of the story is networking definitely opens many new doors and increases your luck. All right, guys, that's it for today. As always, thank you so much for watching. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to check out my video here where I share my strategy on how to ace any engineering technical interview. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.